Administrator wants to give us an update on um, projects. So. Okay, sounds like a plan. Sir? I'm John Leslie. I'm Quincy Leslie and Joyce Leslie's son. Ah. Been running trains out west for 40 years. Retired. God gave me ideas for 400 things to take to retail. And I thought I was going to draw the money from that before doing what I'm going to tell you now. But I just as well tell you now, it just feels right. I plan on putting the railroad back into Sheboygan. I plan on bringing it in in steam. It would hire, I guess I counted off 27 people. I'd go over to uh, Alpena. Eventually I'd cut a bridge or something across at a Lanson, make you little circular forms, turn this into a big tourist thing. So we'd have freight and steam. The railroad is rail banked. It's put away in a bank for you to bring out later. It's been put away as uh, in a saving mode. That's a federal law. About four years after rail banking, the people that wanted to walk the trails said, <clears throat> can we uh, walk the trails? And they said, yes, but you've got to give the railroads back if they want to be put in. And that's federal law. It's an add-on to it. I already talked to the state of Michigan. They said it would cost me $1.73 million to buy the or to replace, he said the, the uh, right of way would, the right of way is what's rail banked, by the way, the right of way itself. He said it would cost 1.73 million to pay for the right of way down to the county line, if not Gaylord. And he didn't know about going over toward Alpena. And the, I don't think the, uh, the, Railroad, the Pennsylvania Railroad that went through a Lanson isn't rail banked. But that might be privately owned. I don't know. I see that they, over there, that they have <coughs> moved the rails for trails off of their right of way. Made that little bridge on the curve down at uh, Ponsiwang, south of the Lanson. So they might have something in the works there. I heard on the radio the other day that Rick. What's his last name? Schultz wants to put a railroad there from St. John's and come up to Mackinac City, up through the Petoskey. Uh, there are, as there in any control program, a big block of money like eight billion dollars for uh, transportation. That's for airports, railroads entrances to rivers and so on and of that there are different subparts of how you can go get that money like revitalizing restoring there's just various ways to go in and get the money well I hadn't gone into that because I didn't have the startup money and I was looking at where I'd be myself in position to be able to do it I talked to uh, Lansing and I told him we wanted to keep the rails for trails. There's some place they can be put. I was told by one of the Guab boys that they used to have the uh, snowmobiles down in the trees down next to the track. Well, it'd have to be built up. Might save the original surface off of the roadbed, put it over somewhere, and then build up the rails for trails and use that same surfacing. I don't know. But when I talked to them, I, he, we had like uh, three parts of the conversation and then the second part he said, we have to give it to you. And I said, yeah, I know. So, and he was the head of Rails for Trails. So it can be done. I've already talked to the state of Michigan. Can be done. Of our, the money's there for building good blocks of it. I think you could be up here in 90 days. If you had eight track crews, they put in a mile a day after you've moved your surface off of what's out there now you could have yourself a, a working area for putting your road bed in and I noticed when my dad showed a film of Harvey Rushlow taking the Detroit Mackinac train the last one out of town 
She said, you want to see him going up the hill? You want to see him waving? And everybody in the house came out to look at the film. I got there kind of late. And when I was looking, I saw the engine and ballast, the stone under the engine. They're taking out the railroad and they had new stone there. What did they know that you and I don't know? Is there all new stone from here to there? I don't know. But there's something good there as a layman for the right of way. I know that in the yard, the where I've been told that, uh, who was it up in Mackinac that owned the lumber company? McCray, Stan McCray bought that, gave it to his son, and the son gave it to the Nazarene Church. So supposedly from Court Street down, that's Nazarene Church property. But I don't know that. I think I checked with the city of Sheboygan, and they gave me a, when I was in a busy time, and he gave me a CD of the property, and that's Nazarene property. I don't know for sure. So how much is the whole thing going to cost? The whole project? I don't know. You got to put the thing it, in. How much is it? $276,000 a mile before they increased the cost of steel. That was six, eight years ago. Is it really feasible to imagine getting the funding from the feds or from wherever? If you, it, for whatever they're not going to supply, it's feasible. I'm just taking up your time now, telling you about it to go think about it. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. Yeah, food, it's good food for thought. Yeah. Talk about food. Yeah, it is. A lot of, well, speaking of food, yeah. <laughs> and then I'd like to see us on the far side of the river across from Washington Park, where the baseball field is. Whatever we do with that baseball field, make 18 of them so you'd have competition in Sheboygan out southwest of town, southeast of town. I don't know, but it's somewhere. And uh, put a uh, yacht club there. I don't know if you go just north of the, of the paper mill and put a hotel in there that's tall and looks out on the yacht club and looks out on the harbor and looks out on everything else. I don't know what the city of Sheboygan's master plan is. They have a river, they have a plan for the riverfront. Yeah. But I haven't looked at it lately. And walkways along the riverfront. Yeah, walkways, definitely. And more things than the people can do that come. So they just don't get everything done. And everything bric or brac for their eyes. Buildings that stick out a little bit, buildings that don't along the water walkway. Buildings that stick out a little more, a little less, a little more, a little less. Let them be smaller buildings. You go in and buy what you want. Have a big building that has everything in it. Let somebody come around and distribute back what was purchased. If another one gets bought, gets on his bicycle and brings another one by. Or, I don't know. Doesn't have to be big buildings. When um, our prior administrator first came, uh, Mike Overton, and he went through Main Street before, before he was being interviewed. And when he came in, he said, why? Does Main Street Sheboygan have banks, parking lots, financial buildings? How are you going to bring people downtown when there's so few things for them to do when they get there? And why do you have a parking lot on your river? And why do you not have boardwalks? Yeah. Because if you want to bring people here, what are they going to do when they get here? And if you want to bring people downtown to shop, where are they going to shop? And if you look at history and the pictures of Sheboygan 100 to 150 years ago, Main Street was booming with shops. Mm -hmm. But the riverfront wasn't, waterfront in those days wasn't utilized as prime property though either. It was fishing property and um, it was expensive to live on and it was cold and windy so it wasn't prime property 150 years ago. Yeah, things <laughs> changed here when you got plows on the front of trucks for the snow. And uh, you could clean out the snow that's here. That made winter change in Sheboygan. It was a hard winter before then. It was all hand doing. Uh, now the boardwalk could be put up along the river any way you want to do it. I mean, it can be disjunct anything. I don't care. But the 
key probably is is that if a piece of cement's been put in that you like there or you don't like there, you just bring a backhoe in and change it again. If you laid it yourself and you don't like it, you can bring a backhoe in and change it. So you can do anything you want if you throw enough money at it. Sound like your dad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same vision? That's a great vision. Right. There is a, I have a software program that's worth $360 million, but I haven't finished it. I wrote it, but I haven't uh, done the software. Just not enough hours in a day. And my brother's in software, so are we going to have him do it? I don't know. And Eric Bex is the head of uh, the Smart Zone, hands out the money. My brother said needed Eric to call him. Eric's up at the college, up at LSSU. And I have, a, I have five projects that come off of one. One's a pet cooler cools your pet in your automobile, uses a bank of batteries that aren't part of the car, has a mat that they lay on to cool them. And the last of what to do with it is going to be done up at LSSU, and I'm just ready to pass the papers up to take the project up there. So the money's there, and, and how many of them are you going to sell? You've got 59 million pet owners. Are you going to sell 59 million of them? Or over five years, are you going to sell 59 million of them? Are you going to make $10 a piece on them and make 590 million? But that's five years away. But once things get started and you can see what's going on and we start up one of the buildings down in the industrial park or something for, for um, manufacturing, once you know what you're doing, then you can move on to the next something that you want to do and get a report that tells what paper, what uh, money's available out of Washington and how much money we need and so forth. Can you get engines? You can get engines, there's five of them to lease down in Ohio uh, that he'd lease. And if you can't get any more engines, any steam engines for the railroad, you can go over to uh, China and have their shops make you one ship it over here, which there's two of them down in, there's four of them here now. One of them went, out, went down in a barge, a fifth one. So there, if you want it, you can get it. And you can probably even have them build you one over in Wisconsin at Manitowoc. Steamtown USA could build you one or put it together. They couldn't build it. They don't have the foundry, but it can be done as far as that goes, as far as steam goes. Any questions? Or? I think some great visioning. Yeah. 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 Really some great visioning. It's there. All we have to do is go do it. I was disappointed when they shut the railroad down anyways. I'm kind of a railroad buff. But mm -hmm. I like the idea of railroads. I really do. I remember when I was a kid around here. I know some of you are not that old. <laughs> some of us are close. <laughs> yeah, there's a way to go, Bruce. <laughs> I lived next to the railroad my whole life, so I... Yeah, you know it. Well, I kind of like your $360 million software project you're working on. Why don't you complete that and then throw that money in the bucket and let and that bring come in first? Yeah, and then, and then start with your vision and we'll have something to go with. You can do something with it. The pet cooler it, comes off into four more devices, and one is one that sits underneath your computer and cools it. And it might be the primary product because it's not running on batteries. <clears throat> I wonder what it would take to cool Gracie. Hmm. Yeah, quite a few batteries. Two and a half ton. Two and a half ton unit. Yeah. Four inches deep in the soil. That's what. Well, Gracie is a what? What is Gracie Master? Yeah, Master. Two hundred pound Master. <laughs> Just, just imagining trying to cool Greasy. That's what I see, you two, two and a half ton unit. Yeah. Kind of putting in my home. I appreciate your time and your vision and thoughts. And yeah, thank you, John. I find out, I'll come back. Okay. Cool. Thank you.
Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you, John. Okay, Jeff, you want to update us on what projects we got going already here right now? Sure. Yep. Uh, we meet tomorrow uh, for a pre-construction meeting for the parking lot to finish that up um, with the engineer and the contractor. Uh, we'll probably uh, get started, I think, around probably the second week of May. The uh, asphalt plants will open back up, and uh, we don't want to push uh, too soon on the concrete. We can start work, but we might as well let the weather get better with that. So. Uh, one portion of the parking lot we will redo up at the Reed building entrance so, and uh, it's probably one of our worst entries up there and the engineer will also look over here at the Glens easement which we have uh, beyond the next uh, board packet to extend that easement but we'll have to come up with some numbers to resurface that road. Did but, we get the final deed from um, the business over here? No, we still have not had our neighbor sign off on his easement. Um, I went over several times in the winter time to ask him to do that, and, and the, I haven't heard a response from him. So um, we'll give him one more opportunity there. The worst case scenario is we won't finish that particular corner there. We'll have to stay away from that. You're taken by adverse possession. Um, well, it could be an option. I, you know, I'm not <coughs> really sure. There really hasn't been any communication back with us why he hasn't signed off on it. We haven't recorded any of our stuff there, so I'm hoping it was just a, a winter we're timing saying. thing. Um, but if it isn't, we'll, we'll give you an update and see what other options we have there. Uh, we don't really need the area for parking, per se. Uh, we don't drain water onto the property. The, the drainage tilts back into our parking lot now. Um, the only thing we did, I noticed this year, we did pile snow all over there. So that could be an issue. But, uh, we'll keep working on it. Um, Humane Society, we're scheduled. We should be meeting next week with Humane Society uh, personnel and the architect to uh, go over the preliminary information on the, uh, the second phase plan. Uh, what we're looking at this year, I think we'll probably only get to the storage building phase this year before we run into to winter. Uh, we need to complete that so we can move the, the dogs temporarily out into a building. Um, so if we, you know, the weather is cooperating and the plans move along, we'll, we may start the kennels, but those will be mostly concrete. Uh, so we don't want to get caught in the winter like we had this year where yeah. we have to shut everything down. Get that done so as early as we can. So it's, yeah, it's very likely that, that the actual kennel part may not happen until this time next spring. So we'll see where we're at on that. Um, we have uh, we meet Thursday with our web developer um, basically we're finishing our final um, platform for the web page itself so the departments can start adding information into that and um, we'll have to build out sections for instance for visitors we don't we don't really have a lot of information right now on our current website so we'll have to build that section out um, we have a couple other sections that um, for departments that are already well formulated, so we'll have to migrate that information in. On the security doors, we, we have a uh, RFP out to manufacturers of security door systems. Uh, this is a, a magnetic lock system with a, a scanning, um, metal detection scanning system in the doorway itself. There's only a few companies in the U.S. that manufacture that to uh, really to an air, airport standard or to a um, federal building type standard there. And we're scheduled to get a RFPs back on the 23rd for that. So we're expecting three firms to give us numbers, uh, but we've only heard from two so far. So, um, Building official, um, Al has uh, gone to um, County Down by St. John's, and um, he, we have an arrangement with with that county that uh, he can still remain our um, building official to sign off on documents until we get a replacement. Uh, we have uh, ad out right now taking in resumes. Uh, we do have an applicant from in within the department also that's applied. Um, so we think by probably around July 1st we should have everything wrapped up. Uh, meantime, the building officials or the building department inspectors are reviewing our plans right now. And if there's a need for a uh, sign-off signature, then Al gets that stuff electronically and sign-offs on it. So. Understand, 
you know, Al's reason for leaving, but what a what a loss, what a what a rapport he had. Wouldn't you agree? Cal was a builder. Yeah, he was really uh, <laughs> personal and everything else. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. He was tough, but he but he yeah. certainly could explain what he was doing and why. Yeah, that'll that'll be the tough part to replace in a, in a person like Al. There is his uh, ability to to talk with people. Our philosophy won't change as far as uh, you know. We're here to assist um, developers or architects to with the codes themselves. So if they have a question on that, we can point them in direction of what code can be utilized, and then they can you know look at the code and make the design and bring it back to us. So that's a, a philosophy we've had for several years now and I think uh, the ability to explain it yeah made quite a difference uh, probably over the last you know, three or four years working with uh, architects and, and developers to, to show them what options are available between the different codes there so uh, Kevin's got a good rapport too he just didn't have he doesn't have the years of experience that Al had but yeah. he does a good job yeah And under uh, CC 911, uh, we're working with uh, the staff and, and the CCE board, uh, along with the other administrators, uh, Marty and also Kevin from Charlevoix. Uh, we're working on job descriptions for the director, the deputy director, and then ultimately we'll do a organizational review of staffing for the organization. Uh, they have a preliminary request in front of the 911 board as far as uh, uh, moving people within the organization for positioning and perhaps a couple other types of positions. So um, that's a project we're working together. I think it's a good um, timing to build some communication between the, the agencies and the organizations there. And um, hopefully it will be, I think it's already helping somewhat there on that level. I think so. But uh, just let you know we're putting that package together and uh, you know, working together. So the, all the counties are kicking in some administrative time to work? Well, yeah. that's important in Tri-County because there's always a concern with one county that somebody else might have the edge. So having all three administrators involved and coming up with a consensus is a good thing from a county standpoint. Everyone wants input. Yeah. And, uh, uh, health department building. Uh, this is probably, a, it's, it's not a complicated construction project, but it's, it's complicated in funding and also the partners we're working with. Uh, again, basically we were looking at probably a 1.4 to $1.5 million uh, renovation of the building. I did talk to uh, John from the health department. Uh, they've been a long-term partner, and we expect that they would still remain that uh, moving forward. Um, I think our first projects will be to look at um, the dental clinic is moving out. We can renovate that portion of the building, uh, move Women's Resource Center, over into that section and then start uh, renovating the upper floor um, on the east side of the building. Where we get a little more complex uh, downstairs, community mental health, of course, is having uh, some issues with funding right now, so it's hard for them to make any type of commitment to us in a long term nature. Um, but, you know, ultimately we'll have to decide you know, if we want to do that. Project, it's uh, that's a little bit too large to pay as you go as far as pre-save it and, and go with it. We'll be more in a, in a situation where we're actually paying debt back off. So we would uh, most likely borrow from tax revolving loan fund and then use probably the next 16, probably take about 16 years to pay it back from the rent. Um, we would still set some depreciation money aside because that was not done previously and uh, kind of left us in a situation we are right now where we started from zero. So um, I think that's probably for a future discussion of... Did we have any water issues with that building, with the runoff? Uh, no, no, we didn't uh, record any water issue, or issues. There's a uh, um, lift station in the bottom of the building that's an environmental issue. Uh, either needs to be rebuilt or removed from the building. Uh, it's just the way they constructed things at the time that was built. Did the roof survive this winter? Yeah, it did. Um, and we, we have a RFP being put together for that right now. We will definitely do that here early in the spring. We're lucky with that. Out of time. 
So around that complex, we have the parking lot being redone. We have the, the roof that will be redone. And we need to address that lift station this year, this summer, for the environmental reasons. But the long-term renovation of the building, we have to uh, have additional conversation of when we want to actually um, pull the trigger on that and the financing of it. Uh, we'll have to move some people from the building for a while. Um, we can work on the east portion upstairs without removing people, but there won't be any way to do that for the health department. So we'll have to relocate and maybe temporarily in the McLaren building or something. So, so it's a complex one. <laughs> Not going? Yeah. Uh, senior center. Uh, primary issue at the sand road is a septic system um, because the medications used um, by people that visit the, the center basically it just dis destroys the septic field as far as there's no um, bugs in the, <laughs> in the septic field to process that so the, yeah. yeah the engineers are trying to look at uh, some alternatives there we may have to, to put aeration system in the tanks themselves um, you know, we, we may actually end up with a little mini treatment system there eventually. Really? It's not from anaerobic to aerobic, eh? yeah. Would, yeah. Would the Wolverine Center have that same issue? Doesn't seem to be as much of an issue down there. I think smaller it's, numbers? Yeah, I think because the numbers are smaller. They've got the daycare, sand, uh, yeah. Yeah. sand yeah. castles there. More intensive use? Yeah, that's probably where most of the, the tougher medications are, are coming is from. Is there any specific medications that are causing the problem or I mean is there like a list of things that or is it just virtually anything or is it the quantity? There's probably certain types uh, they're probably before. The chemotherapy. Chem um, Cancer treatment drugs oh, have an effect oh, on yeah, the, yeah, on the yeah. thing. A lot of it is the antibacterial stuff that people use now, soaps and cleaning solvents and all that, stops action and septic. Yeah. So it's a, a bit of a challenge for that. Um, you know, worst case scenario is they have to maintain pumping the facility <coughs> frequently. Um, but the only other alternative we have, mid alternative, is add aeration to the system. Mm -hmm. After that, you would be in some type of small treatment facility uh, for that area. But then you're talking about some pretty serious money then. So. In our marina project, the uh, um, we're under still under frost laws right now. Um, contractor, and uh, we're also talking with the road commission to see if we can get uh, onto the road it's a little bit early. I think we only have one section of the road. Uh, we may be responsible for some maintenance money on that, which I think would be a less than $1,000. Uh, the state wouldn't pay that, so I'm, I'm talking with Kurt right now to try to work some details out there. But if we don't move soon, we're going to be into June before we can get the harbor back active. So uh, we might go through $1,000 pretty quick if we're not open. So. And we may have to we had pull Kurt, trigger. Uh, inspecting the road commission's underground tank, so and we're not charging them for that, are we, for the inspection? No, but they do. They do provide us sand and salt uh, for our parking lot, so it's. So we traded Kurt for sand and salt. Yeah. Is that <laughs> <laughs> pretty partner. much, yeah, pretty much. But I think they've been providing us sand and salt for a number of years. Yeah, we, they have. We've only provided them with that service for about the last year and a half, so. Yeah. Probably a few years up on us on that side. It was only about a quarter of a mile on Slade Road there yeah. that, that that's in question, so it shouldn't be a big problem. Yeah, I think it's one of those issues we just we have to do what we got to do to get it done. So it might cost us a little bit, but I figure out, you know, the state provided uh, 300 and something thousand, we can probably come up with a thousand. So and we, talk, we, we talked about it the other day at our waterways. Commission meeting that it's uh, it, yes, it's the idea of getting the dredging done and getting all that stuff hauled out of there. But then the the docks have to be put back in place, and I don't know if you all remember or not, but the the docks broke away from where they were uh, stationed uh, temporarily, and the wind blew them out, and there was some damage done. So uh, um, Flotation docking out of uh, Cedarville has some repairs to do to the docking as well. Again, 
hopefully get all that done before season starts. So I'm that, sensitive too because it could so, be a very short season. Yeah, the clock is ticking here as far as trying to get all this squared away. Is the ice out of the marina yet? I haven't been down there to look. I, don't I know. was down there yesterday. The barges are tied up. Nobody's around, and yeah. there's a there's still some ice in there. So not too bad. It wasn't too bad Sunday. The r mouth of the river was at least open. Yeah. Sunday. Oh yeah. The river's open. Oh, here's a 15 minute report. So. Yeah. Okay. I thought you did a fine yes, job. Yes. Very good. Oh, I'm taking up time. There. Okay. We'll Thanks. we'll <laughs> we'll break and get lunch set up, and Peter should be here anytime. Jeff, do you remember the day of the tri county meeting? Last one? The one coming up. In May. In May. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't have my phone. I think it's the uh, 20, say it's 21st. 20, yeah, somewhere in there. It's a Wednesday. Yeah. I have the 21st row, though. Okay, that is, yeah. That's where I thought it was. Wednesday. It's going to be over there probably at, uh, it looks like they're going to have it right there in Petoskey, probably at the Adawa Hotel, the old Holiday Inn. And the ferry people, mm -hmm. the 911 to tour it. Okay, we, we will now recess recess to probably about noon. No, I, I, there, I, I'm almost That meeting you're just talking about, is that the one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I